Hi, and welcome all of you. Nana here. And today we are going to see the express receipts and cascade receipts of EBS basically. We'll have a go on and have a look at it now. How they are done. So let me first of all create two suppliers. One for express and then one for cascade now. So let me create it now. So let me create the suppliers now. I click on create now. <coughs> so I will now say Nana <coughs> underscore express. Supplier. Okay, I'm gonna give this now. So I go there and I click on apply now. Nana Express supplier. I click on apply. So I'm not creating a supplier actually. So once uh, when the main thing is now come, what happens? Uh, the data quality management may even throw some errors. That what happens? Some matching suppliers will be available. So if that is the case, what happens? We had to ignore it and then uh, create a new supplier. Otherwise, it will be going straight away into the system as such now. <clears throat> you'll now see what exactly the system is now recommending as such. Fine. So it's now saying the possible combination matches now. Basically. So this is now matching with uh, so many things like this now. So we can ignore the uh, DQM's recommendation and then click on the great new organization. The data quality management is now giving this recommendation. So we can ignore it and then I'm now going to go on and create it now. Actually, suppliers are basically won't be payables and then the payables model is responsible for creating a supplier because they're going to make a payment also. So they will be setting up so many things. <clears throat> so we go ahead and then create a supplier on this now. So similarly, what happens, I will now create one more supplier for Cascade also. For Cascade uh, receipts, we are going to make a supplier. Fine. So the express receipts and cascade receipts are ready to come in fusion. So they are uh, they will be soon coming <coughs> in fusion. So as of now, it's not available. So we'll now see what exactly is an express receipts now. Uh, in fact, what happens when I was working, we will be we are, we were using this uh, concept a great extent actually. So it covers the main screen in which what happens uh, you may be updating certain things and then click on save now. So we are saving it on the main screen. A quick update screen, we are saving it now. So once you save it, you can now find a message that it will be saved now. And then afterwards, uh, we go down and then go to the payment details and then make one of them as a default payment <clears throat> so that what happens the, the when you push and to procure to pay what happens it will not be having any issues as such now so you have to have one of them if you want to make an automatic push uh, you must have one of them enabled as such <clears throat> one of them is enabled so i will now go on that make one of them as a default payment and then you can override the default payments in payables as <clears throat> so whatever is there i will now make check as a default payment enable it and then click on save now so the check payment is now saved. <clears throat> you can now see the payment methods has been saved now. We'll now go ahead and then create our address, address book now. I go to the address book. I'll let us now create the address book. So we are now creating an express supplier on this now. So click on the address book and then we'll now create an address now. In Fusion, address and site has been separated out. Whereas here, both of them are in the same place actually. <clears throat> so you'll be finding both address and sites are none. So they have separated the address separately and then site separately. Here. Uh, both of them will be available on the same screen for creation actually. If I click on create now, I'm going to get address now. <clears throat> so I'll be now creating an address address now. So we give the appropriate postal address now. I will now put some address. Fine. Uh, we are not given the city, county, and state because it's the United States. And so again, the DKM will now come into picture actually. I will now give the site name actually. Fine. I will now say it's site one. And then I will now enable it for purchasing and payment. There's no doubt. And then afterwards, click on continue. So the DQM will again come and then it will now say the city, county, and state are missing actually. I click on continue. The DQM is now going to throw an error now. So actually, it is not an error, it's only a warning message you now, but it has been wrongly configured as an error message. Fine. It's not an error actually. Fine. The state, county, and city is a warning message because what happens on the payment stub, uh, it will be having uh, two parts. One is a payment advice, and then one is a, what's called your address or other things. So it has got two parts with the perforation. So if you're putting all those things, it will be printed on that. And then what happens in a window cover, we can very well, uh, what happens, uh, post it directly to supply without writing anything on the song. So that is why it is not giving error. Fine, doesn't matter if I click on continue. So if you give a continue, what happens, it will accept this message you now and go there. And then this is for multi-org access control. I'm enabling it and then click on apply, by which what happens, the site assignment is now made now actually. <clears throat> this is known as a site assignment in Fusion now. This is called a MOAZ as well as what happens, you're associating an address to an operating unit actually. So this is what else. So by which we complete uh, what your supplier creation actually. Fine, you know that. I close it now. So now complete the supplier is fine. Express supplier is now created. Fine, close it now. And then let me create one more supplier for cascade also. Fine, go there, go to the supplier now. So let me get a supplier for cascade now. So click on create supplier. So I will now create one of the supplier for this now. Fine, I'm going to demo both the things now. Fine, nana underscore cascade underscore sub, sub two now. Sub two, I'm creating it. Fine, click on apply now. 
So we go to the, again, what happened? The DKM is coming up and click on create new organization. Caskets, of course, it's not very created now. So once when you go to the main page, click on save now, and then make one of the payment details as a default payment now. You go to the payment details, and then make one of them as a default now. So we'll do the, uh, now we can check as a default and click on save. And then after having done this now, this is for a P2P push actually. Fine, go to the, go to the address book. And then here, we are getting an address. Fine, click on create now. So we are going to get an address now. Fine. I will now say <coughs> Bangalore address. In reality, what happens? You'll be filling up every information over here now. And then I will now make it as a site two now. Site two, I'm making it now. Fine, enable it for purchasing and payment. And then click on continue. The DQM will now throw an error now. Fine, doesn't matter. Ignore the error. <clears throat> in reality, we'll be filling up everything. Fine, click on continue. So the payables department is responsible for creating a what happens a supplier size. Fine, select it and then what happens? Click on apply by which what happens is also created now. Now let us now create two items for this exercise. Now fine, go there. Let us now create two items. Now. Fine, go there. You go to the items, master items, and then I'm going to get a pen and paper now. Fine, go there. It is Nana <coughs> underscore pen. Fine, uh, pen. Uh, I'll get a pen for express results. <laughs> So I'm now going to do it. I'll now go to the tools now, and then I'll go to the copy from the tools copy from. I'll now go and then apply a template of purchase and template. Find this enables it for all the functional areas. You go to the purchasing, and then I will now give a list price of this. Now. And then save it. So by which the item gets saved. And then afterwards, I go to the tools, and then I go to the organization assignment and assign it to my organization. And then save it. I will now come back, and then again create one more item now. Find paper. I will now create it. Find control down arrow. I will now create paper. <coughs> It is a paper is for uh, what happens a cascade <clears throat> cascade uh, test actually <clears throat> go there we'll be using it for cascade test and I'll apply the same template now and go there go to the purchasing and then I will give a list price now of two and then commit <clears throat> it is not done and then I go to the tools and then go to the organization assignment and then assign it so items are ready supplies are ready we are now going to what happens to check the express supplies and go to the purchase order now so let me put my uh, what happens the express supplier now. Express supplier, I'm going to put it now. Fine. So express supplier, I'm putting it now. I go there. So express supplier is the one. I go there. Go to the item. <clears throat> so here, what happens? I will now put Nana percentage pin percentage. Fine. The item I'm going to put it now. Fine. Nana pin. I go there. Go for hundred quantities now. I go there. And then I give a date now. And then in the shipments, let me make it as what? As a standard result. Now. I go to the shipments and then go to the receiving controls. I will now make it as a standard result. Now. So standard result. Fine. Click on OK now. And then commit. So now we have made one purchase order on the supplier now. So close it now. So on express supplier, we have now made purchase order for pin. And click on approve now. It is getting approved. And click on OK. So this is now approved. Now we will now create one more purchase order on paper also. Fine. Pin, we have made a purchase order. And then on the same supplier, I will now make one more order. 6866 is the one. Control down arrow. I will now make one more purchase order on uh, what happens express supplier. Nana uh, percentage EX. I'm going to tap. So express supplier, I'm going to choose it now. And then I will now choose on paper now. Fine, Nana percentage. Pa percentage. Fine, paper, I'm going to put it now. Uh, Nana paper, I'm putting it now. I'll go there. I will now for 200 quantities now. <clears throat> I'll now give it eight. And then here also, what happens? I'll now make a change to what? As a standard. So likewise, what happens? We would have made multiple purchase orders for a particular supplier. Now, what happens if these are all stationary items? And so, what happens? He will be putting everything in one vehicle and then we'll be sending it for what happens. Anyway. So, his delivery channel will be having what happens? Multiple POs in one, one delivery channel will be having 6866 as well as 6867. So, in such cases, what happens? We'll now enable the express receipts. Fine, go there. So, we have to enable the express receipts and go there, go to the receiving options. So, we have to enable the express receipts on the receiving parameters. So once when you enable the express receipts on the receiving parameter, <clears throat> so now you can see on the receiving options, I have not enabled the express. I have not enabled the express. So let us now go there and then try to query. And here what happens? He is now supplying multiple POs on one thing. I go to the receiving and then I go to the receipts. So here I will not query on the PO number, but on the supplier name. So once when you make, make a query on the supplier number, what happens? The express receipts will be coming up as such now. And you can see at the bottom and go there. I will now query on the supplier. Fine. Nana Express supplier. I'm going to query it now. I will now query it. And then click on find now. It will now show both the POs against the supplier. <clears throat> so it's a very useful mechanism by which what happens is becoming. Supplier is coming. Fine. Go there. It will close it now. But Express is not enabled because we are not enabled to the receiving options. So only when you enable it, the Express will be coming now. Fine. Close it now. And go there. 
So this is what else. We go there and then I will now enable the express now. We'll go there. So I will now allow express zips. So at the org level, when you are enabling it, what happens? It gets percolated to the receiving section actually. Fine. Uh, some people will be allowing express as well. So that means what? We can query very well on a supplier actually. Fine. Go there. So now again go to the zips and then let me query on the supplier now. Fine. Go there. Nana percentage exp percentage. Go there. Click on fine. So close it. Now, if you click on the express, express has got enabled because it is enabled in the receiving parameter. If you click on it, what happens? If there are some 50 lines, everything will be getting selected together. Click like on express. What happens? All of them will be. So here we have an option of what? Sending it to final destination also. Because what happens? The standard is it will go to the receiving section as well as what happens? It will go to the final one. So during express receipts, we can express way, we can send it to the final receiving or the receiving section. You can choose it also. So this will now bypass the receipt routing, which has been mentioned as the purchase order now. So we can go there as long as the receiving and go there. Oh, okay, it will go into the receiving section. Now, if there are multiple lines are there, we can even, uh, if you have my mistake, you have selected, we can even unexpress. It's basically unselect all. I click on unexpress, it will be getting unselected. But if you have selected the express, and then what happens if you are given okay, and then if you remove one of the tick marks, okay, fine, go there, uh, and then I click on unexpress, fine, again, what happens now coming up. So, likewise, also you can do it now. Fine, click on express now, and then I choose it now. And then if there are multiple lines, okay, fine. Specific lines we can remove and then make a transaction. So we are now sending it to the receiving section. <coughs> go there. And now here, what happens? You go there and then commit now. So commit again. Now, what happens? You it is an express one. What happens if you make a change now? You cannot make a change in the quantity at all. So there are two conditionalities for the express zips. So the supplier has to supply the full quantity. The pin, he is supplying only 90 quantities, is not possible at all. It is not possible for us to change now. So otherwise, what happens? We cannot put a hand on any of the lines at all in this place, whatever you cannot put it. So we have to accept only full quantities. So other things. And then one more requirement is what? Uh, uh, what happens? The receipt routing uh, on the what happens? The purchase order is mandatory, actually. Or rather, what happens? The sub inventory on the purchase order is mandatory. Now I have not given any sub inventory at all. So I cannot deliver it because we cannot modify these lines at all. These lines cannot be modified. So you cannot make a change at all when you are in the express. So let me, in the gate, what happens is okay. Uh, we are not given the uh, uh, sub inventory over here. If I click on what happens, I will not go then commit. So you will now see the number of express transactions created will be two now. Fine, GL is not there. Fine, we will now open the GL period and all the periods because now we are in the April month. So I have to, what happens, open up all the periods now. Fine, I have four. Come out of it now. So I will not commit now. I will now switch responsibility to GL now. <coughs> My GL is reject. Go there. Let us open the periods now. <coughs> So we had to open the periods. So the GL period, the inventory period, and then the control purchasing periods must be open now. Fine, go to the setup and then go to open close now. Set up and open close, and then click on find now. So for the month of April, I have not opened it. And go there. Uh, April 18 is already open, but uh, okay, that's okay. Fine, April is already open. Uh, but what happens, all the three periods has to be open now. Fine, GL period is okay. Fine, we'll now go on and see the inventory periods. Fine, April is now open. Fine, go there, close it now. We'll now switch responsibility to purchasing also. We'll go to the purchasing. In the purchasing, we will not see if the control purchasing period is open or not now. Here is the purchasing now. Go there, purchasing. You go to the setups and then you go to the financials and then you go to the accounting now and then you go to the control purchasing periods and the navigation now. So, set up financials, accounting, control purchase, and double click on it and we will not see whether the purchasing period for April 18 is open or not. And then the inventory periods also. And I will not query for the April now. April iPhone 80. I'm going to make a query. In fact, I'm going to go now. I'm querying it now. So once I query, it is never open saying, fine, no, open it up now. So we are opening it up and then click on save now. And similarly, the inventory periods also will now make a check. And go there. It's not done. The periods have been changed now. I close it now. And now we'll now go to the inventory period and then have a look at it now. Fine, go there. <coughs> you go to the navigation. And then here now go to the inventory period now. It's okay. Okay. It's all done now, actually. <coughs> we'll now go to the inventory period now. Fine, go there. Switch responsibility to inventory. And then we will now have a look at the inventory period now. So it is accounting close cycle and then inventory accounting periods for our, sorry. I don't want that, that cancel. I will go to the inventory accounting period now. I go to the M1 organization and then have a look at it now. So whether all the periods are open or not. So April, April is in future now. Fine, let me open them. Click on change status and then what happens? You okay now. So by which we are not done it now. Fine, go there. <coughs> Now we come back to purchasing. <coughs> we go to the purchasing, and then here, what happens? We go to the receiving and the receipts, 
and the let me query on the supplier now for the amount of organization and go there supplier i'm going to query point nana percentage that was the exp percentage in your tab now i can find it when you coin it all of us all the things will be coming and then the moment you select express what happens the quantities cannot be changed so there are two conditionalities are there one is what the supplier has to supply everything on full quantity if he is ordered 100 pence or 1000 pence he has to supply everything in one go so that will be uh, communicated to the supplier we cannot make up any part suppliers part supplies cannot be received in express at all we cannot express no we cannot receive it because what happens this will be uh, basically what this will be uh, it cannot be edited right you cannot edit this uh, line of the express and then click on control s commit so what happens you will be finding that the number of express transaction created is two now so the total express transaction created is two now right click on okay now the other conditionality is what the sub inventory must be mentioned on the purchase order now fine go there we will not try to go on that deliver it now fine go to the receiving transaction and deliver it now so this reduces the work of the person who is sitting in the gate actually so if there are some 10 purchase orders in one dc what he can do is he can now do express transactions in one go he can do it now fine go there i will not query again on supplier and click on find now <clears throat> and since we have enabled it in the organization parameter what happens you are getting express actually go there no record meets your stretch criteria uh, how come <clears throat> we already done it now actually uh, uh, express supplier we already done it now uh, click on find now <clears throat> i think uh, probably we are not given any he is not coming as a go is coming now if you click on express and then what happens it will not show you both things are now they are connected now now here what happens you can now see the sub inventory is not there for delivering it sub inventory is not there if you click on it what happens you cannot edit it now fine none of the lines can be edited actually in the express transaction what happens you cannot edit if i try to commit what happens the number of express transaction it will be zero kodi mutte pujyam fine that's what i said so nothing can be done now so we have to wait so this is the second conditionality of the purchase order now fine close it now so we will not do this now fine go to the purchase orders <clears throat> and then what happens query So this will be communicated to the supplier that what happens for such stationary suppliers and other small value suppliers, we will ask them to what happens supply full quantity, and then the purchase officer has to mention the sub inventory also on the purchase order. Otherwise, express transaction cannot be completed at all. So I am retrieving it now. Fine, I will do only for one of the purchase orders. So I click on the shipments now, and then I go to the distributions. The distributions, the sub inventory information is mandatory. I click on the distributions. The sub inventory information is mandatory for express systems. What is sub inventory? I will now put stores over here now. Your tab. And then come it. Now, when you make a change, what happens? Some of the minor, insignificant changes, the uh, status will not change at all. Fine, go there, close it now, close it now. It is still, it requires the approval. Some, and then it doesn't undergo a revision. Now. Fine. And then uh, you go there, click on approve. For a minor change, it will not. It will. For a minor change, only the, what happens? The status changes, but the revision doesn't change. For an insignificant change, what happens? You go there. I don't know. You want to make an insignificant change. Fine, go to the shipments now. And then if you go to the receiving controls. And then, if you make a change to what happens, there is an inspection required. Inspection required. It is a very insignificant change, and so what happens if you commit it? There will not be any change of anything along. When the status as well as this thing will not change. For an insignificant change, no changes of the status as well as revision. For a minor change, only status change, and for a major change, both the status as well as revision will remain. Consequent. And then I go to the page now. I will not make it as standard now. Standard one. Click on OK now. I commit. Let's commit. Not done. So now, if we go there, this can be delivered now. Six eight six seven can be delivered because it's now having a sub inventory information on the distribution area. It's already having. So this can be delivered, whereas the other one cannot be delivered now. I close it now. We'll now go to the receiving and then go to the receiving transaction now. And then let me again query on the supplier now. Nana percentage exp and then give it a tab now. And then click on find now. <clears throat> so you'll be finding it out. So if you make an express, click on the express now. Click on Express. Both things are selected. If we save it, what happens? Only one of the transaction will go because it's not having a sub inventory. We cannot edit it. Fine, control S commit. So the number of Express transaction completed is one. <clears throat> so one of them will go inside. So this completes the demo on Express transaction. So here, what happens? There are two things. The supplier has to supply full quantity, and then the sub inventory information on purchase order is mandatory. So in this case, we can do it now. Fine. It will now speed up your activity on the gate actually. and that too when you are receiving so many quantities what happens you would like to receive it in an express way so you will now inform supplier also that what happens they don't supply any part quantities now we will now go for a cascade transaction of fine now see cascade fine go there i will now make two purchase orders fine go there let us now make two purchase orders fine i will now say nana percentage cas percentage and go there cascade supplier i'm going to do it now fine because item so here what happens i am not going to make a purchase order on only one item fine go there <clears throat> here is a nana underscore Uh, I will not say paper. Go there. I will not make a paper. 
my paper i'm going to write i will not go for 100 quantities of this now 100 quantities and then i give it a fine code there and then i will not go to the uh, shipments and then i will not make it as what receiving controls i will not make it as a standard now <clears throat> standard anyway. here uh, what happens the distribution is not mandatory for the cascade results i go there the distributions is not required i go there uh, here uh, the sub inventory is not required also i go there so i have a known purchase order <coughs> fine go there so here uh, Nana paper on the cascade two. What happens is now made for hundred quantities. Click on approve now. Click on OK. So six eight six eight is now created and then it's approved. And then I will now create for the same item on different uh, units of measures. Fine. It is now the requisition date. The required date is what is sixth of April. And then I will need it on some other day. Fine. Go there. Click on it now. Control down arrow. I will now make one more purchase order for this now. Fine. Car percentage is under tab. What else? You go there. And then on the same paper I am going to make it now. Nana percentage, PAP percentage doesn't give it a paper. I'm going to put it on. Fine. Here, what happens? I'll not stop. You it doesn't. I'll not make dozen now. Fine. D is it doesn't give it a tab now. So D, <clears throat> I will not choose the dozen now. Dozen. I will not say ten dozens. Fine. Automatically, the price gets converted now. The price will be converted for dozen now. Fine. Go there. So that was needed on what happens sixth. Now I'll not say this is needed on twentieth. So a different date, and then I click on the shipments, and then I go to the receiving controls, and then make this what standard. Fine. So I'll click on OK. Here, what happens? We are not mentioned the uh, what happens. The distribution now. Fine. Distribution is not mandatory as far as the cascade is concerned. Now, fine. Close it. Close it. Now, fine. Now, let's come in. So we have two purchase orders: six eight, six eight, and six eight, six nine. Fine. For an item supplier combination, actually. For item supplier combination, and uh, needed. Uh, maybe what happens? You'll be having both of them on the same units of measures also. Fine. And then, but what happens? The need be rates are different actually. So now, for understanding purposes, what happens? I have now given a different unit of measures. Fine, go there. So we are done it now. Fine, both of them. Are. Now, what happens if we are going to make a cascade receipt? So for a cascade receipt, what happens if you go to the receiving and then go to the receipts? We have to query on an item supplier combination. Hi, Rupesh. I am now making a record on uh, express and cascade receipts. Fine. Uh, as soon as it is completed, what happens? I will not talk to you. Fine, go there. Uh, in okay, time, okay. You can just watch me. Fine, you can just watch me. No, no, I. <laughs> Regarding you, yes, I don't have any idea. Okay, it doesn't matter. Just watch. You can another five minutes to become later. So, Nana. Then, no issues, Nana. I can continue. Yeah, cascade. I will be back after ten minutes. Okay, fine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Now. So, uh, what happens is that Nana cascade, and then what happens item I'm going to put it is what Nana underscore paper. So, Nana paper is the one which I'm doing it now. Fine. So, the supplier item combination you had to query for a cascade results. For cascade results, what happens? Query on uh, supply item combination. Fine, click on find now. So if you find it out, what happens? You can now see only the express is enabled. Cascade is not enabled at all. Cascade is not enabled. So what happens? We have to enable it on the organization parameter. Otherwise, what happens? The cascade will not be enabled actually. Only express is enabled. Fine, close it now. And then uh, you go and then enable it in this place. Fine, go there. In this place, what happens? Now allow cascade results are enabling it now. Remember, these two features are yet to come in fusion off, and they will be coming very shortly. Fine, they will be coming very shortly. Express and cascade is it to come up. I click on save now. So I am now saving it now. I go there. So let me save it now. <clears throat> so there's no saying waiting for reply. I go there. <clears throat> so once we are saved, what happens? The message will be again uh, doing it, but this bottom message has to go now. So waiting for apps, not the so and so come on. Fine, if it is not allowed, what happens? We are again close it and then opening it up. Fine. Then only what happens? I can do it now. So we are now doing what? Yeah, cascade result. No, fine. We are enabling it to the organization parameters. And remember, for a cascade results, we had to query on an item supplier combination. <clears throat> fine. No, no, you have encountered the error. This was saying fine. We go there and then we'll now again open it up. No, fine. Go there. So we had to open the receiving options. Now go to the setups organization and then go to the receiving options now. So this is the navigation now. And open it up. Because that is a stale one. And so what happens is not allowing you to basically modify it actually. Now the pages come fine. Go there, click on go now. We are going to here. What happens? I'm allowing cascade results also at the, at the organization receiving parameters. I click on save now, and you can see the changes are saved now. Close it now. Now we go there, and then we can very well perform the cascade and go to the receiving and then go to the results now. Gate results. I'm going to make it number. We had to query on item supplier combination. There's a cascade and go there, and then item supplier combination. You query for express. What happens? We had to query only on uh, what happens item. Uh, or a supplier here, what happens? Item supplier combination here to query for cascade. Now, cascade has come now. So, normally at the gate, you will now make an express transaction. And then at the receiving section, you will now perform a cascade. 
And remember, uh, the purchase order is not having any distribution information, but the express transaction in the gate, that is not required. Only for the delivery, we need the sub-inventory information. So we will now normally perform an express transaction, 100 each and 10 dozen, right? Take on express now. And the gate, what happens, they don't do it. I will not bring it to the receiving section. You cannot bring it to the final decision because what happens, the sub-inventory information is missing, that will not fail actually. So I will not what happens, make the destination if it's receiving and then click on OK now. So we are now bringing it to the receiving area. And then in the gate, we will now make an express and then inside, we will now go for a casket. And the total number of express transaction rate is two now. And go there. And then we will now go to the what happens, inside area and then do it. I will tell you the what happens, significance of it now. Uh, so let's say, uh, what happens, uh, purchase order has been made on the supplier for hand gloves. Now. In our company, we use it for hand gloves actually. So we make uh, what happens, uh, multiple purchase orders on the supplier. So he will all be supplying together in one go. Actually. And then uh, they comes in crores. They pronounce it as a crores. One crores is nothing but a 144 pairs of hand gloves actually. So they supply around, let's say, 50 crores. <clears throat> so that many hand gloves will be coming. And then once when it comes to the main store, what happens, uh, the inventory in charge will be sending a mail to each and every section that what happens, hand gloves has arrived. Please come and then collect it tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to open up, break open up the package. And then what happens, you can now do it. Now. So uh, what happens, every section will be having a collection uh, area. Some people will be having a box which can have only five pairs. Some people will be having a box which will be having 10 pairs. So likewise, what happens, uh, they will be bringing those ba boxes to the, what happens, the main store. At around uh, say 11 a.m., they will not say. At 11 a.m., they will not bring it over there. And then uh, what happens? They will be sitting there. Actually. So we are now going to perform a casket transaction. We have done it many many times basically. So you go to the receiving transaction now. So double click on it, and then you go into it. And again, what happens if you query only on supplier? What happens? It will not come at all. Fine. If you go and query on supplier, the casket will not be coming at all. The ca for casket receipts, what happens? We have to query on item supplier. Now. Even though it is enabled on the receiving parameter, what happens? We have to query on item supplier. Then only the casket will be coming. Fine. Go there. Displays. We'll query on the item and then put the item also. Fine. Paper. Put it on this one. So not a paper. So an item supply combination when you query, then only what happens, the casket will be enabled. Even if it is enabled in the receiving parameter, it will not come at all. The casket is coming. So here we are going to cascade and then we will not perform an express actually. Express, you cannot do it because what happened there? Uh, the, the sub inventory is not mentioned in the purchase order. So if you go for a cascade, what happens? What it will know, Sue, is we have a 100 each and then we have a 10 dozen. So let's say the first, is, I will know, I can even dispatch it. I will know what happens. I will dispatch it in a different unit sub also. I can click on cascade now. So once I cascade it, what happens? I will now say 10 quantities. I will now go for it. The unit sub measures, I will now say, I will now choose what box of five. So the first section is now coming with a box which can contain only five now. So likewise, they have around 10 boxes basically. So we go there and then click on OK. So the moment you give OK, all the lines which are in a different units of measures will be converted into box of five. So there's no box of five. So is each is a dozen. Click on OK. Now all the lines will be converted. And then we need, uh, it needs only the first package because when the first package has got 100 each. And so what happens, that will be selected. The second will not be selected. And click on OK. And you can see the first is selected. So everything has now become. So if you commit it, what happens? Uh, the 10 box of each will now go into the inventory now. Fine, but let's commit uh, because it needs a sub inventory now. Fine. Here I will not mention the sub inventory over here. We'll go there because delivery in the sub inventory information. And then go and commit cutless. So what happens? We'll now see that this much of a, what happens? The stock will be going in now. Fine, go there, commit. So it's no transaction is complete now. And then RTP will run now. Upon every activity on the receiving section, the receiving transaction process concurrent will be running now. So once the concurrent is completed, what happens? The activity will be uh, basically sensed actually. So you go and then see this now. RTP is now completed. Fine, close it now. And then we'll now close it and then have a look at the receiving transaction summary now. So go to the receiving transaction summary. And then uh, we had to query on the GR number, but I will now query on the supplier now. Fine, go there. It's a Nana percentage. Cost, then give it up. And then we'll now find out. There's only one result. That is what 10 each actually. So there is for a box of five, right? Ten box of five. It will not show you that has been delivered or dispatched to the system. Fine, click on it now. What else? Click on the transaction lines, and you can see that ten box of five would have been dispatched <coughs> to the section. Now, what happens? I will now take some other. Uh, the next section is coming. Fine, go there. So deliver is what ten box of five. It is now received each, and then what happens? Now come to the receiving section from there. What happens? We are now delivered the different units of measures. Now, if you want, you can even deliver the same units. It doesn't matter. It's not going to harm you. But if you want, you can even deliver a different units of measures. But we used to do different units of measures basically. Now we go there, go to the receiving, and then go to the receiving transaction, and then we'll again do the casket. Nana percentage cost, and then we tap, and then item is nana percentage paper, and go there, and then click on find now. 
So this time it will not show you what are the balance quantity of this one. Fine. The 50 each is available on the first one, and the 10 doesn't is there. If I click on cascade now. So here, what happens? I will not say I will not go for 10, and then I will not go for what happens this time on a different unit of measure. So fine. With a case of 10, I'm going to now. So 10 case of 10, I'm going to dispatch it now and go there. Click on OK now. So here, what happens? Everything will be converted, and then the first line is not having sufficient quantity. 10 case of 10 is what 100 each. 100 each is required, so it's not available. So it will not pick up from the second one. So I click on OK now. It will not say, okay, take it up from the second consignment also. Click on OK. And then what happens? It's not taken five more from this place now, basically. And then uh, you give the stores here. Now, fine, go there. The stores. And then you tap. And then second line also is not quite now. Fine, go there. Second line also. What happens? You need a product. Like, commit. What happens? It's becoming field must be entered. You must say, fine, shift F5. And go there. So it has not taken up five each on this now. Fine, go there and commit. And then commit. This is also completed. So again, RTP will run now. If you go there, this time, what happens? We are now given uh, what? You are uh, this thing now. Fine. Case of 10 actually. And you go to the receiving transaction summary and then uh, look on the supplier actually. And then I uh, give a find out. Fine. You can now see that one more uh, transaction is now completed now. So we'll now go there and find it out. And then if you see what happens, it'll all that. Fine. Again, the same supplier, the GR number there. Fine. Click on transaction now. If you go and then have a look at the cascade now. Fine. Go there. So box of 5 is delivered as well as what happens, the case of 10 is also delivered. Two delivery transactions are taking place. So we are received it at the each and then there's another gate actually. And then what happens if we are not delivered on the case of 10 actually. So we are in it. And then if you go there and then see on this place now, I don't know why uh, double entry has come off. Six, eight uh, uh, is it delivered as well as delivered now. Okay, fine. Uh, we are not done for uh, what happens uh, uh, on the first consignment. We are now taken five cost of in case of five, and then on the second consignment, we are now taken another uh, another five cost of case, case of ten actually. So that's why what happens? We are now getting two such things and close it, close it. And then now what happens if you go there, go to the receiving area. If you go there, go to the receiving area, and then uh, go to the receiving transaction area, and then uh, try to cascade it now. Fine. Nana <coughs> percentage cascade, and then uh, put the item over here now. It is Nana percentage paper. And then click on find now. So once when you find it out, what happens? You know, see, only one line is available, but it is now showing a fractional dozen actually. But in reality, what happens? You will not be having such a fractional dozen specifically fine. because if you convert it, it will be having only the each quantity only. Fine. If you click on cascade, we have got only one line to cascade actually. Fine. Click on cascade, and then I will now say two, and then I tap it down. Fine. Go there. Uh, I will now choose some other thing also. Fine. Case of twelve, I am going to choose it now. Fine. This time, case of twelve. Go there. Click on OK. So what happens? It is now converted in the case of twelve, and then go and then commit. Now. Fine, it's a case of twelve lecture. Fine, go then commit. So this is also uh, will be getting it completed now. <coughs> so go there, and then uh, we are given this case of ten. Fine, go there, and then the subordinate is mentioned. Fine, let's commit. So this also go there and go there, close it now. And then if you go and then have a look at that, what happens? The receiving transaction summary on the supplier now. <coughs> go there. Now another percentage cost, and then you tap and find it out. And then click on the transactions. You can now see all the transactions which are coming. So this time, what happens? You can now see the case of tolls also. So if you have such a requirement of what dispatching it in different units of measures, we can even use the cascade uh, route now. Uh, otherwise, also what happens if you have multiple purchase orders, you can club everything, and then what happens? You can now start to what happens? Uh, open up the bag. In our case, what happens? Uh, one, it is a break open. Actually, it is not coming in a sealed package. Actually. Uh, those things, uh, those handles are becoming a seal packet. So the moment you break open it, what happens? We cannot close it at all. So they will dispatch everything to all the what happens? Uh, requesters actually in one go. So receive as well as uh, deliver in one go into the uh, in the receiving section fine, and different units of also. So this is on the cascade transaction actually. Fine. If you have any doubts, you can write to me at uh, uh, what happens? Uh, uh, Nara 60 at uh, gmail.com. I will now clarify all the doubts. Now fine. I have around uh, 20 years of domain experience in this now. I worked in this. Uh, uh, what happens in this year uh, in this supply chain uh, when there were no computers at all. From the time I was working, so I got uh, from 83 onwards, 1983 onwards, I'm working now. So I got uh, plenty of uh, domain experience actually. I get the things clarified from you, and then I do attend my trainings actually. I'm now conducting training on uh, uh, fusion uh, procurement as well as fusion inventory, and then I do subscribe to my video on the bottom, and then I click on the bell icon. It will now become chunk, and then what happens? It will be it'll be getting automatically notified also. Fine. Let us now see you on the next video. Bye now. <clears throat>